know, we've been, I'm still in my feelings about Valentine's Day. And today we are sharing stories about embracing unity in love, inspired by the iconic Bob Marley and the Whaler song. It's incredible when you think about it. Bob would have turned 79 just last week. February 6th was his birthday. He passed away nearly 43 years ago at the young age of 36. And of course, there have been many documentaries on Bob Marley's life, but now for the first time on the big screen, Bob Marley's music and life are being celebrated in one of the most anticipated movies of the year, Bob Marley, One Love. I mean, even though he passed away at 36, of course, he had such a big life. And I love this film because it focuses on a very pivotal period of Bob's life, 1976 to 1978, when Bob recorded his groundbreaking album, Exodus. Time magazine in 1999 called Exodus the best album of the 20th century, and I agree wholly on that. That is a fact. So the film is during the height of political violence in Jamaica in 76 when Bob's home was raided in an assassination attempt, nearly took his life and the life of his legendary wife, Rita. Here's a clip from the film. It's a hit. Reggae is the people music. You know you're a superstar. I am a superstar. You can't separate the music and the message. You see, reggae music come to unify the people. Not everyone likes what you're saying. For your own safety, you need to stop. Mm. Yeah! I've seen the movie. It is incredible. It's been a, quite a year for the star of the film, friend of the show, Kingsley Benadire, the Bob Marley movie, and then earlier this year he played basketball, Ken, in the record-breaking movie, Barbie, the largest grossing film in 2023. I hear you chuckling, because that means this man has range. Range is what I'm talking about. Please welcome a daytime exclusive, award-winning actor, and the guy everybody is talking about, Kingsley Benadire! <laughs> Vibe. It's a vibe. As soon as I go in the building, there's vibes. I don't know, but I'm in a. I feel like I'm in a party. You're in a party. I'm in a party. So what the audience doesn't know at the beginning, before we even go live, and we are live, the audience has basically a magic mic strip thing going on. <laughs> Our audience coordinator Tracy, what y'all didn't know when you were dancing, Kingsley was around the corner watching. Tell me. Tell me, you guys. <laughs> yeah. See, you missed out on this because the last time we spoke, January in 2021, we were on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So you are that... first time in studio. Yeah. This is you with our friend Regina King. Yeah. And you were promoting a beautiful film where you portrayed Malcolm X. Yeah. And you now from Zoom to the room. Zoom this to is the how room. it goes down here. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. Yeah. Um, I remember, well, I remember that. You remember film. that? Yeah. I'm happy. You know, you yeah. got the Gotham Award in 2020 for your portrayal of Malcolm X. In Comey Rules, you play Barack Obama. A little bit. A little bit, little but bit. a great bit. Yeah. <laughs> and now, Bob Marley. Yeah. You. Yeah. Um, just. The, when I said in the intro, the range of what you do is absolutely brilliant. I know there are reservations about playing Bob Marley, mm -hmm. down to the physicality. You're 6'2"? Mm -hmm. Just under. Just under 6'2"? Bob was like under 5'7". Bob was under 5'7". Yeah. So you were looking at this not just from the music, but from the physicality even. Yeah, I, I just want, I wanted, I wanted to make sure everyone understood that I was coming in from scratch, you know? It was like me and Bob were very different in how we're structured. I don't sing, I don't dance. Like, no one can sing and dance like right. Bob anyway. And the patois and the culture, like, I just wanted to make sure everyone knew who they were coming to, you Why know? did you take the role? Because that's a lot of pressure. I mean, I saw a quote just that Ziggy Marley put up, and he, too, was looking originally for someone who was Jamaican. Mm -hmm. And then you came in the room, and he said he couldn't take his eyes off of you. 
um, sometimes the challenge is in front of us, and we... <laughs> Not that way, ladies. <laughs> but sometimes the challenge can be in front of us, but fear will keep us from that challenge. Mm -hmm. What made you pursue it knowing all of what was the responsibility of this role? For sure. I, and I, it was the fear. I was like, it doesn't really get much more dangerous than this in terms of, like, acting, you know, yeah. because I felt so, like, it wasn't for me. And then you kind of go, well, I have to pursue it, you know? And, and, and really, once I knew the family were involved, I was like, OK. And we started a conversation about the, the parts of Bob that they wanted to share with right. his fans, and they were... They were they wanted to make a movie that wasn't exploring him as an icon or like a legend. We all have an idea but of But how Bob. do you not explore him as an icon? Because, I mean, listen, we were just in Jamaica. The entire island um, reveres Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. The world reveres mm -hmm. Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking, I, I do think it was genius to extract this part of the story, mm -hmm. um, this political moment, the creation of Exodus, versus here is how it all yeah. started. Yeah. You focused in, the script focused in on this very monumental few years of his yeah. life. Yeah, it was it's, it's, it's humanity, you know? It was, it was that Bob, at this time, I mean, they all nearly died. You know, gunmen really went in and shot up the place. And a bullet was lodged in Rita's dreadlock, yeah. you know? They, they shot her in the head. Um, so, for me, what was interesting was out of that trauma came this masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Bob created that album, you know, in a few months. So he went into an exile in London and just went into, like, manic creativity. So in talking to Ziggy and the family, we spoke a lot about safety and the idea of safety and inner peace as it related to Bob at this time. Yeah. And, like, what he was... When I say... Bob is an icon, Bob is a legend, but actually Bob was a human being. He was a father. He was a father, yeah. which is you know? what... <laughs> um, there's a scene where you are in the car with the children, and you forget, I, I've talked to Bernice King and Dr. King's children in the past, and when you're having to share your parent with the world, mm. and then you lose that parent, and you didn't even really get to know, they were know. babies. Yeah. So much of yeah. what they learned about Bob was from Rita and from... The world. the world, yeah. So many times I'd be with Ziggy or Steven or Ryan and, you know, I'm trying to get as much information as I can about Bob privately, you yeah. know, what he was like privately. And then I'd have these moments where I'd be like, wow, this is your dad. <sighs> this is your dad. And you actually remember, you know, Ziggy and I, were, we were doing the, a scene in the movie where Bob's getting told by a doctor that he, you know, the diagnosis. And it was just a really surreal moment. There was just such a... Uh, there was a really intense energy in the air because I was, we were, Vizigi was remembering it and, you know, for me, Bob, learning about him mm. um, and what he was like with his friends, you know, guys who grew up with him. Who, guy, I, spent time with, I spent time with guys who knew Bob when he was 14, Gosh. you know, before he was famous, yeah. like, in Trenchtown. They, like, took me around and showed me where they hung out, showed me where, you know, what they did. And the more I got to know... Bob on a personal level, the more I just kind of fell in love with him in a way, you know, and I just wanted to make mm. sure that we were protecting his his spirit and his essence. And, and Ziggy, Ziggy and I were straight. It was like, no one can play Bob, you know? Yeah. No one can play him, but what we can do is try and honor a little bit of his spirit and try and, you know...